My name is Paddy Hirsch, I'm the Senior Editor at Marketplace, and um, I have a little diagram here which will show you how collateralized ob debt obligations work and how they've affected uh, the financial system and this, given us the problems that we're in today. So what we have, first of all, is we have a CDO manager. This is a guy who decides to create a collateralized debt obligation, and he, what he has is, in this simile, he has a bottle of champagne. In order to fill this bottle, he goes out to investors and he asks them for money, just like any normal investors. These guys are bondholders. They give him a bunch of money, and what he does is he goes out and he buys a bunch of securities. And they, they can be anything you want. They can be loans, they can be uh, credit card debt, they can be student loans. But in this case, they were mortgages. So he went out and he went, bought a bunch of mortgages, and he put them in his bottle. And what he did is he created the capital structure in the same way that a company has a capital structure. And we're going to show this capital structure like a pyramid of wine glasses, just like you have at the wedding. Maybe you have people pile up those glasses with the idea of pouring champagne into them, all set in a nice silver tray. And each of these glasses, as a security, is, is rated according to their riskiness. So the top rate is triple A, this is double A, triple B, double B. And then this bottom, the tray, is the equity. We won't worry about that so much at this point. Now, at the end of every month, what happens is the cork pops off because all of these mortgages are paying interest. It causes a great deal of pressure, and all of the money from that interest flows out of the top and into the pyramid of glasses. Now, because these are the least risky and pay the least interest, they get filled up first. Then the second row gets filled up, then the third row gets filled up, finally the fourth row gets filled up. And then the equity triangle, the big silver tray at the bottom, gets filled up. And everybody's happy. Everybody gets paid. No problems at all. And that's what happened during the housing boom. Everybody got paid. But what happens whenever, say, one of these mortgages, or say 30% of these mortgages or mortgage holders, stop paying their mortgage? Well, it means that there's a lot less interest being paid and a lot less bubbly coming out of the top of your champagne bottle. So it means that the first glass may get filled, hence the least risk and the lowest payment. The second uh, uh, set of glasses may get filled, even the third last set of glasses may get filled, but the last set of glasses does not get filled, they're empty. So it's a bit of a problem for these guys, also a problem for the equity holders, because they're not getting paid either. But you've got a whole asset class, a whole tranche of holders that are not being paid any interest at all. Of course, they're being compensated as a result, because their rate was 10% if they did get paid, whereas these guys were 7%, these guys got 5%, and these guys got 3%. Now, what, what where this situation becomes complicated is where you have another asset manager who decides to go out with and build a champagne bottle or have a champagne bottle, but instead of filling it with mortgages, what he decided to do was fill it with these mortgage-backed securities from the CDO. These are the mortgage-backed securities. And he took, if he was, he took, say, one of the or glasses from the bottom row from the, from the double B because they paid 10%. In the boom, these glasses were generating 10% a month. So he filled this bottle up with these glasses that were generating 10% a month. Now that's no problem whenever this pyramid is full and everyone's paying their mortgages. But if only 30% pay and the bottom rung of glasses is not being filled up, well suddenly this champagne bottle, when the cork pops at the end of the month, is generating zero. Now he has got his own pyramid of glasses. That is to say, he's got his own uh, investors to satisfy. But unfortunately, when you have a bottle filled with glasses that are not being filled at the end of every month, then nothing is filling the top glasses. Nothing is filling the second row. Nothing is filling the third row. And yet, they are still rated as if they were as safe as the original asset. Now, this is the problem. Hundreds of millions of dollars have been invested in this kind of secondary CDO. And this is the situation that we find ourselves in. These, these uh, or in the investment managers, CDO managers like this one here, have gone out and they've hawked these bonds to people all over the country and, in fact, all over the world. Uh, pension managers in Norway through to um, you know, people at CalPERS and pension, ma pension managers and mutual fund managers here in the US. The net result is that these investors have packed their or packed our funds 
with these securities, which are not paying anything now and are liable never to pay anything again, especially if the situation in the housing market persists and people stop either foreclose on their houses or stop paying mortgages or default or whatever it may be. This, the number of people actually paying their mortgages is, is decreasing, so therefore there's less and less foam coming out of this first bottle, less and less of these securities being filled, and therefore less and less of these AA highly rated securities actually making the money that they were supposed to make. The result is that you know, we are, we're in a mess of our own making, or a mess of these, uh, these bank managers making, or these fund managers making. The fact that uh, these securities have been poorly rated by the, uh, the ratings agencies who did not understand the knock-on effect of a few people failing to pay their mortgages has left us all, well, frankly, as Rico says, needing a drink. <laughs>